We are so excited to learn all about arts and crafts and making fun, creative projects with Karen. She's going to share with us all sorts of ways to make art and creative stuff accessible for your child. Karen, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation to present to your audience and Matt. Um, so my name is Karen Pope, and I have worked at the American Printing House for the Blind for an awful long time, probably before many of you were born, <laughs> um, since the mid-80s. And I've just enjoyed the journey of product development and just providing some tools and materials both for the education within science and math, but also specifically more towards just developing tactile literacy skills and concepts. And one area that I found a lot of deficiency in, in terms of a product line was art materials. And of course I have a son that he's much older now, but when he was young, he really loved art. So it just was something that I was a little bit passionate about and wanted to pro provide materials that very self-explanatory materials, easy to use um, for, from both the student's point of view and within a home environment. So I'm going to give you um, just a brief tour of some, uh, some of the to tools and products that APH offers. And keep in mind as I go through these, that they can always be supplemented and embellished by things that you might get at a craft store, or other materials that you have at home. So it doesn't have to be one or the other you can kind of merge and support the materials. And Melissa will interject as she needs to, to give perspective from her point of view as a parent and um, just ask any additional questions that might be of interest to you. So just starting with this first slide here, what I have featured on the front slide is um, an art artwork that a young um, child created on their own. Um, during a field test of a product that we will be um, introducing soon. Um, it's called Sensible Strips. And it was just a way for, well, the strips uh, can be used to create artwork or just embellish things like maybe you want to adapt a storybook, a tactile storybook that your child's reading or a game. Um, and I'll give you some examples of actually using it for educational purposes as well. But the strips are adhesive backed and they come with very discernible textures and edges, as you see in this uh, photo here with like a saw toothed edge or a scalloped edge. And so with those strips, the student um, presented a house, sort of a whimsical house with the sun and grass and it looks like a mailbox. And it was just done on their own. So again, that's what we want to foster is just independence and just the joy of creating a piece of artwork on their own without a right or wrong. So let me, um, what I'm going to do is again, just give you a brief tour of some of the products that APH offers and that can be used for art development. And then we'll segue into ways that those can be applied for if you're at home and you're wanting to help with some math concepts or science concepts at home. And then the third part of the presentation will focus on ways to really hone those tactile uh, literacy skills that they're going to need throughout their school career. So in terms of products, one of my favorite ones that we offer and probably one we've had for almost 20 years now is what we call quick draw paper. And it's really not paper, it's actually a compressed um, sponge material. So the, the premise is if you take just any off the shelf uh, water-based commercial marker, we provide some in the kit, but you can go to any of your you know craft stores, drug stores and just off the shelf um, highlighters, anything that's um, damp, where they draw on the sponge paper. And as they draw, what's really cool is that they'll get an instant um, raised tactile image. And you get both the color and the tactile married together, which is good for students who maybe would like that visual contrast, as well as the tactile feedback. So in this particular photo, it shows a little girl. This was actually during field test too. APH always, when we say field test, we, when we're developing products, we look to um, parents and teachers to try out products that are we are currently developing to see how we can improve them 
and enhance them before they're actually launched as an official product. So in this case, during field test, a little girl took that quick draw paper and she traced her hand with um, a marker and probably during Thanksgiving made the little turkey shape and she was real proud of her artwork and held it up and we actually featured her. She's probably 30 years old now, but <laughs> we featured her on, on the front cover of the artwork and she has stayed there all these years. So um, it's, again, the it's not really paper, it's just compressed sponge paper. It used to be more stark white and the latest um, rendition is almost like an off, like a, what would you call it, beige, yellowish color. And um, so it's a little different than what was originally introduced. Um, but it still uh, performs the same way. And I believe you get like 10 sheets of that within a, a given pack. So I have the catalog number up there. If you go to APH's website, you can just search quick draw paper to learn more specifics. This is one of my favorite products, especially with siblings. Um, Cause I think sometimes it's really hard to find those arts and crafts activities that are both for, you know, your sighted child, as well as your child that may need that tactile. And it's just, it's a, I, I'm a fan of this one. Cool. And what's really fun to do is just like, just to show how much that expands. If you just tear up a little piece and you put it into water, it's going to quickly expand to almost like a quarter of an inch thick. <laughs> so you never want to get that exaggerated, but um, anything that's real uh, sloshy or wet is what's going to respond. There are disadvantages to it. If you really have a piece of artwork that you really treasure, um, it does get grainy over time. So I always recommend keeping even the unused uh, materials or sheets into a Ziploc bag or tight um, package because it's real uh, temperamental to like humidity and that kind of thing. So another thing just to keep in mind. The dis another disadvantage is it doesn't erase. So just keep that in mind. Like once you draw on it, it's done, you know. Okay. So another tool that we've um, recently introduced probably about two or three years ago was the tactile doodle. Very self-explanatory, very easy to use. It has um, it has a green frame as you see there, and the black surface is actually a real thick foam material. And it works in combination with a tactile drawing film that you can buy. Well, it comes with the tactile drawing film sheets, about 25 sheets, but you can always get replacement. Um, packages of that film for drawing purposes. And again, it's really easy. You just take a, a single sheet of that drawing film, kind of lock it underneath those outer um, clips to hold it steady. And with the drawing board, we offer, it's like a short non-roll um, drawing stylus that's comfortable for a young child to hold on to. But you can also use it with a, just an ordinary ballpoint pen. I mean, it doesn't have to be the stylus at all. But when they draw on that film, uh, you're going to get an instant visual tactile uh, replication of whatever is drawn. And it almost appears in this particular instance like a chalkboard contrast with the white against the black background, which helps students who have some low vision um, concerns and uh, very easy to draw on as you draw the, in fact, don't be timid. Like it's that film is very durable. It won't tear easily. And the more pressure you apply as you're drawing, um, the higher and crisper the tactile line is. So in this particular instance, it just shows someone who took the drawing stylus and drew a sailboat with some birds and the sun on there. Um, Again, it's very appropriate for younger students. It has sort of a younger vibe to it. Um, and so it's very lightweight too. And it has some non-skid um, feet on the back that prevents it from scooting around as they're drawing, which is important. And, and I love this one for travel, like in a car, it, it travels so well. And it's easy to pass between passengers, not the driver, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you could drop it, it's not going to break, and it's just really handy. Like I said, self-explanatory, not a lot of instruction needed, just pick it up and use it, and it works. So, um, And I'll show you some applications for that as well. 
This one's really old. This goes back probably to the early 2000s. <laughs> and Picture Maker was actually marketed from APH primarily initially as an orientation mobility mobility tool where they can do quick on-site mapping of an intersection um, when they're trying to sh showcase a particular landmark and features that are around that area. Um, but it's, you know, it's an open wide um, platform for drawing or creating graphics. So even though like in that particular instance in the slide, you have a cul-de-sac kind of abstract cul-de-sac drawing. Um, you could use that for any, you could just provide that whole felt board. It's the felt board um, is a bi bifold board and it has what we call Veltex covering, which is receptive to anything that's hook uh, material back equivalent to Velcro um, that just kind of hugs onto that felt board real securely. So in that particular kit, you have a whole assortment of different types of geometric shapes with different textures and colors from felt to foam to like a, um, a slick, smooth material to what I used to call pajama feet material, sort of that bumpy white material. Um, a lot of just uh, simple shapes or strips that you see there, whether they're right angled or in some range from like an inch long to about an eight inches long, about a quarter of an inch wide. So a lot of um, variety there. We even um, include, it looks like some rhinestones that we got at a craft store. Um, so it's sort of, and craft eyes is another popular part there. So very, um, just a plethora of options as your, as your canvas. So the thought board is your canvas and you have all those um, different shapes and strips that provide your palette of um, materials that the student can just arbitrarily pick from based on their own liking of different textures or, or shapes or colors and create their own artwork. And to provide um, some extended options, we also um, offer accessory packages. This one's called the Geometric Textured Shapes, and they even come with some little puzzles. So if you want to do some puzzles, those it doesn't look so apparent here, but the, the yellow frames are bumpy, and that will contrast actually with the smooth shaped red pieces. And, and conversely, um, the yellow bumpy pieces will contrast with the red smooth frames. So that's fun. There's some X's and O's if you want to do some games like tic tac toe. And again, extending those um, geometric options from to shapes like stars and triangles and ovals just to ex extend. Um, different options for your students to use. And then one ex additional accessory is the, um, just a whole kit of strips as opposed to geometric shapes. So we have interesting things like what it calls sort of this railroad track line. The little black lines are actually raised so you get a nice, um, if the finger's tracking across those paths, they're very, uh, it has an interesting texture to them. And then sort of this little rat, uh, dashed road line um, appearance with the black lines, dashed lines on the yellow background. And it's hard to tell here, but all these different strips have different textures. I believe the green are sort of um, a rough sandpaper texture. And then the white has sort of uh, a flocked white, soft, velvety texture to them. The purple is your typical craft foam. So you get not only different textures, but a little bit of uh, variation in the height of profile between one strip and another. And then some fun shapes that are kind of wavy and stuff. 